Game of Thrones. So Danny's turn to the dark side. So I have a theory about this. In the penultimate I, episode. Yes, in the second to last episode. What's so funny to me is everyone's like, it came out of nowhere. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> no, Danny the whole time has been a villain. You were just tricked into thinking she wasn't. Like, let's just look at the facts. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Tell, well, so, I, I, I get what you're saying. Can't so let's so, like, they, they effectively tricked you into thinking that she was noble. But what, imagine I just told you a scenario where a person who thinks it's their blood right because they're psychotic father who was about to kill everyone was killed they think it's their blood right to retake the throne and how they did it was they took over a band of people who are basically like Genghis Khan style rape and pillagers she, they controlled that by killing their entire leadership in some sort of by burning the entire uh, like um, what was it that whole uh, the whole council of the Dothraki. They, the person burns an entire like Genghis Khan leadership tribe to take over the place, to make them think. And then also sacks two cities that are like democratically run cities and does so in order to eventually take one ships from one city and another take a a large army of slaves, a slave army. So bands together a, an army of Genghis Khan horse riding type rape and pillagers, which is what the Dothraki really are presented as, even though people are like, don't like, they're always like, it's like they're marginalized because they're called savages. But in fact, like every indication of what the Dothraki culture is like is like, no Dothraki wedding happens without at least three deaths. And like random people are killing each other all the time. And they're like, we're gonna, the reason she killed that whole tribe of people they're like what should we do with her we're not gonna let her rule like we'd rather rape her it's like that's what they're all about and mm -hmm. then she's like no no no. i'm gonna kill all you and then all your like underlings are gonna follow me and they're gonna go and do my bidding and then every city's like we don't want to have the dothraki like run through our city because they're gonna take and do things that they do and mm -hmm. it's like not prejudice it's like what the characters are presented as and then her she has she has a slave army let's be real about it they pretend that they are free i thought she freed them yes she that's what, <laughs> that's what she convinced them that's what she convinced them she's the only person who has an army that is neither fighting to defend their homeland or even paid like a mercenary she's the only person with a slave army she pretends they're freed like they're freed from the masters freed to do what freed to go fight almost certain death wars for her all the time for what for her conquest for her blood right she is she is the epitome of the character that you should have been you should have seen is the ultimate evil rising this is how she takes the throne she's it's even compared to, compared to the north right the north fights for their home right they fight to defend their freedom right <laughs> this is what the north does the free folk do the same thing the lannisters are fucking savage business people they're taking it out but at least the lannisters pay their army danny only has an army based on fear or or manipulation manipulation that i've freed the slaves except once i free them all they have to do is just go across the sea and fight for me in these ridiculous wars and die all the time and then by the moment by the moment she loses it like we're supposed to believe she gets on the city and she fucking for whatever reason she loses it because Masandai got killed and she burns the whole city it's like wait all of the people she's with like totally go along with it they are like the army is like falls into place immediately she doesn't have a code they're not like oh no no no, no she just she played the whole time they set you up for they played on your like default like when you go to karth right she goes to karth in an early season people don't remember this very well but i actually rewatched the scene because she goes to karth and there was that group the 13 or whatever the 13 people they're like we're in karth like you will meet you are the 13 but, is this the slave Fin no, it's not, uh, it's not the slave. Karth is before. Marines, the slave city with the got it, got it. Karth is the city where they have this tribe of the 13, and there's like some kind of fat guy with an English accent who's like, Well, I haven't seen any dragons, so I'm not sure I should let you in. I'm not sure why I should let a bunch of Dothraki into my city to do, maybe do whatever they want. I'm mm -hmm. not sure that Karth became the greatest city that the history has ever known because we just do this type of thing. So, unless you want to show me your dragons, just 
like, I will, I am the blood right of this thing. And she demands three ships from them and says, I'm going to pay you back once I take over the seven kingdoms. And he's like, okay, like, so you're going to go kill a bunch of people and then you're going to pay me back for my three ships. Anyway, she fucking ravages all of them. She just takes them all out, like ruin, takes that whole city out because they wouldn't give her ships or hospitality because she just demands it. It's like the craziest thing. So she goes in and she says, I'm going to, then when they tell her they're not going to let her, she's like, I'm going to burn the whole city to the ground. That's her immediate threat to Karth when they reject her in season like two. And we're and we ignore it because we think they're being prejudiced, because our 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 impulses are not listening to what we're hearing, which is like, oh no no, like she's yes, being a we bad, like her badass on behalf of the yeah, people. Yeah, we like her because she's like attractive and she has like these dragons in this really cool scene that happened at the first end of the first season. But like in the end, she is bloodthirsty. She, she is, her immediate threat is I'm going to burn everybody. Her, what she ends up doing, like many times before this last scene, is randomly burning people who betray her at all. It's just, it's, it's hilarious that people are like, oh my god, what a turn. They should have taken more time to develop it. It's like, from day one, Danny was, she was a victim in season one. That's true. But they used that and the fact that she's kind of attractive and likable and pretends to be for social causes. I mean, think about what this is. I free the slaves to make them fight in every fucking war for me. They have the <laughs> worst lives. The unsullied have the worst lives. They are just, and then they get into the into King's Landing and they're just like, Okay, like, why not? Just fucking tear up random civilians. You know? And the same thing with the Dothraki. Have we ever gotten any indication that the Dothraki have any interest other than, like, rape and pillage? That's like, it's like a joke in this show, but it's like, it's not like they've given us, this is all fiction, by the way. This isn't, like, a real group of people. The group of people that are Dothraki are, like, a stylized version of, like, what you'd assume Genghis Khan's clan of horse riders were when he was taking over Asia in history. Like, just some of the most brutal killers ever on horseback going town to town. The thing that they were saying when she, in, I don't remember what season it is, but there's a scene where she basically take, takes over the large Dothraki army. And how mm -hmm. she does this is she runs into them, they put her into the, uh, into like this kind of tribal room where there's all these fire pits and all these men who are the Dothraki leaders uh, talking to each other. Some guy like is like, okay, she's like, you're going to follow me and we're going to go take over the Seven Kings. And he's like, uh, no, we're not. And she's like, oh, what do you guys do? All you do is go from town to town raping and pillaging like random little villages. And he's like, so... And then he's like, maybe I'll rape you. And then she's like, and then so we're triggered. And now she's allowed to like burn them all. And then she emerges from the fire because she's superhuman. And then the whole group has to just think she's a god and follow her. Because like it's now she's they, she rules on fear because she killed all their leaders. It's like if you just look at it objectively, she's always been this terrifying figure that has got together these armies. I mean, think about just an Unsullied versus a Lannister army person. At least they get paid. Well, Jamie does say, too, he's like when they fight, he's like, they weren't, they weren't struggling. Like, they were killing us for sport. Like, they're going to demolish us, which, I mean, they foreshadow, yeah. like, uh, in last season. Yeah, it's just the idea that she wants. And then the other thing I think, aside from the fact that I think that Danny has always been the villain, they've always been painting it, the, the hints that they've been giving us that we've been taking too much is that she's not the villain. We were manipulated I know, just like I she was, manipulated. I was. I we was like, she's the freer of the slaves. Yeah, the unburnt. That was, that was the ultimate The mother of dragons. That's the ultimate manipulation. Because yeah. just like the Unsullied who believed they're free, we believed she was the freer of slaves. We believe that. Because well, she did free that one she, slave city. She did, because her whole army is slaves. Her whole army is former slaves. Except, what do they do now? That all they do is fucking fight and die slave for her. her. <laughs> all they do is, it, it's like from a slave army that all they had to do was protect people to now they are a slave army that has to go like fight the dead and basically get, lose a ton of them. And then also like go take over King's Landing. For what? For what? Well, okay. This is really interesting. I, I did not have that perspective i'm wasn't i'm not blindsided by the fact that there's an argument for they've been teeing this up for a while i think despite that there was i thought she's a conqueror right but she had won in this episode they rang the bell they cersei 
and her army surrendered with a group with a city full of civilians so to me it's like you have the victory and that's what i thought she wanted the victory so that's why it was a little shocking where it's like no no i'm gonna burn innocent people discriminately and i at least thought that that wasn't her style it, to me there was a little bit of a barrier crossed yeah, i mean not, to not, burn no all the innocent people not in the city. Indi- no indications not that she had her brother uh, burned in a fire with a crown of gold by her carl carl drogo putting the fucking uh, iron right on her head and she just looks at him and watches her own brother die because she fucking hates her brother and we're like oh yeah her brother sucks so like we're okay with that and she fucking fucks up karth and she fucks up marine she burns so many people she burns Sam Sam um what's his name uh John's friend you know she burns his, his family. family yeah she burns him the Tarleys she burns just everyone at every time it's either a threat to be burned or burns them she kills all the Dothraki in the fucking tent she just and we always right before she does it it seems like oh well they pissed me off and we're like, yeah, yeah, they kind of sucked. So yeah. the show has been tricking us into thinking that every one of the people that she killed is, like, worthy of death. Which a lot of times they are because they try to, like, one-up her and do something real bad. So we're always seeing her as, like, not as bad as the person she kills. But they have presented... If you were to think about, like, how would one take over the Seven Kingdoms without being in the center? like a um, Cersei is, basically. Without being in the center of power and just a couple elbows gets you the throne. How would one do that? You would, especially without resources, without money, and without whatever, you would free the slaves. Because then you have a slave army. I mean, how easy was it for her to both manipulate them and to manipulate us as an audience to get that army God, by coming through? And it's and the other thing is, one of the things I think about burning the whole city, I don't think that she is has shown us that she's above that at any time before. Her only claim to the throne has always been her blood right. And for at least five episodes, or for more than that as an audience, we've known that is not she doesn't have that anymore so mm-hmm. what is her claim and she's not like is it to be the best ruler because she's not trying to be and for like at least four episodes we've known that even knowing that information she is not going to say oh well I believe in blood right so therefore you should be king you know because it's, yeah, it's just that's very when obvious she started, you could tell the turn well, it's is very obvious when it she... became maybe she shouldn't that she wasn't the rightful heir you started seeing her seize up it was like oh wait it's not about where for john you can tell he doesn't want to be a leader and he presumably and some of her advisors yeah want what's best they have a sense of of themselves that they want what's best for the world for the people of the world they want a civilization that's worth fighting for and she they have been teeing up in the last couple episodes that oh when it becomes apparent that maybe the best thing for everyone is not her being the leader you see her going but i want it yeah, you can tell that she. So that was I did notice well, and, that is like, oh, she's not so great. She's not selfless for the people. She wants the throne, whether it's best for her to be on it or not. Let's bring this full circle as to why this was a, a very likely and also not totally a huge character change out of the blue. Her father. Why was he the Mad King? Because when Ro- this is the story, at least, that they've told us through all the seasons and is also in the books. And if you're watching all the extras and you're going to read about it, this is it. The Mad King. Why was he the Mad King? He was, he, why, did he, why did he put the green wildfire all over the city? He put the green wildfire all over the city because his kind of plan was if Robert comes in here and takes it, I'd rather it be, there be no city for him to take. I'd rather light the whole thing up so that if I can't have it, no one can have it. And what just happened in the last episode? The daughter Targaryen fulfilled the father Targaryen's greed, essentially. She played exactly. If I can't have the throne by blood right, because Jon has the blood right, then, you know, then no one can have it. I'm going to burn this fucking city. Just like her dad. It was, it is exactly full circle, completely in line with the exact reason that the Mad King was 
saying exactly what he wanted to do when Robert might have taken the throne instead of him. She did that right before John could take it out of, her, out of her nose. She destroyed the city. It is the Mad King's dream that was averted because of Jamie Lannister before, and this time it was not. If I can't have it, no one can have it. She just ensured that in the fifth episode. That is the that is the thing that we've always been led to, and the trick is not that they tried to... I mean, yes, I would have loved three more seasons to get this story out, but Danny has always been the villain. That is the story, and the other story is that you were tricked, oh, I was tricked, I've we were all tricked. I've not watching it that, that way, is the, yeah. that, is the, that is the ultimate thing. It's like, if you were to wonder how someone could be a genocidal maniac on the grandest scale, far, far, far beyond Cersei or any other evil, Ramsay Bolton, whatever, in the show, they wouldn't even look like it necessarily for a while. And they would be manipulating you. They would be raising slave armies. They would be raising armies that are willing to go into cities and fucking fuck them up and fuck up anyone for what, whoever's cause. They would be armies based on fear. They would think they're fighting for one thing, but they would be pawns. She, is a play, she played this. She has played this Game of Thrones, and now that she knows she can't win on Bloodright, maybe she can win on Fear, but if she can't, she's going to burn it all down, because if, no if she can't win, then there's not going to be much to win. And she just ensured wow. that. That's interesting. I have not been watching it that way. I've totally been watching her as the savior, and before I found out there were, you know, aunt and uh, nephew, I was like, all about her and John, like just getting. <laughs> I know this is like I know, not well, interesting we, I mean, story. There's this part of me that's like, I love them and I want John and her to like marry and then they'll rule the whole kingdom in a hundred years of Pete's winter is canceled. <laughs> winter is canceled. Winter I love that. Canceled. Okay, that's that's <laughs> great. I think we should end on that. It should have been winter is canceled, but in fact, the story just came full circle like it was <laughs> suggesting the whole time. And I actually think that the big lesson is on a lot of us and I, I don't actually think it was so poorly executed. I mean, I would have loved a few more seasons, but uh, yeah, I think that Danny's always been the villain and w the, the real trick was that we didn't even see her the whole time, even though they gave us every indication. And I think that a, a full review of all the seasons and you look at her knowing where she goes, you're going to see it. You're going to see it when she goes to Karth and threatens burning them all. You're going to see it when she goes to this, when she kills her her brother, even though he's a piece of shit, when she kills him, when she uh, goes to Marine and she's like freeing the slaves, but she burns and just all of what frees them to what when you know what's going to happen frees them to endless war and conquest for her own self gain afterwards and then goes to the Dothraki takes over their whole tribe and basically just burns them all to be a fear based ruler mm -hmm. and then takes them all on a rampage to take over and then once she realizes that she doesn't even, even have the blood right that she claimed she's fucking gonna if I can't have it no one can and that is the ultimate story that's always been suggested and I just think they played it right Right? And we were played, and I think that was part of the point, is to show you how it could be done. And I think it's pretty believable, because we all believed it. And then we didn't see it coming, and that's the only way it probably could have happened. Wow. It's funny, I noticed as she was burning the city, I was like, wow, there's all these you know, innocent people who are living like the most close to a desirable life in the whole world, basically. Like the North's kind of depressing. Everywhere she's from is like, you know, slaves and brutality and whatever. And Cersei, I've always looked at as just the most brutal kind of cold-hearted bitch character. You know, she seems so evil. And she does. I mean, she kills people ruthlessly. But I never gave her credit for the fact that she's the only one who like rules, like she rules over what seems to be providing the most maybe i'm wrong i need sounds like i need to rewatch but the most the thing worth protecting yeah whereas daenerys has never all she is is a conquerer i mean she never let's had interested most, in most ruling of the people, over it seems like there's a few in this fictional society just to be clear it seems there's like a few wealthy people and a ton of peasants yeah but i mean isn't yeah. that city is King's Landing is like the only kind of semi-prosperous yeah, city one of the that you see. Ones, yeah, for like sure. of the rulers, they're all kind of ruthless. I've always thought Cersei is the worst, but the whole idea was creating, recreating the world in a better image that was provide good life for people. And even though Cersei, I always thought. 
have always thought she's the, the worst, most evil person. She's the only one who even had anything close to a sapling of something that could lead to, you know, human flourishing on a big scale. No, and I think in, in moral in moral levels, there's my army defends my homeland, which is the north and the, you know, wildlings or whatever. My army fights because I pay them. And my army fights because they're afraid of me, or I trick them into thinking they're free to just fight for me for my own self interest. Like they're for all kind of bad. Yeah. And I think that if you really think about it, that's about as complicated as it gets. And I think that I don't know what Danny's army has ever been fighting for, and they've never addressed it. And that's obviously on purpose because when they got to King's Landing, they were like, oh, we're killing people now? That's what we'll do. <laughs> Did it seem like John's a moral like, question? What John's like, fuck? what happened? What's going Whoa, on? Whoa, I didn't see this coming. It's like, yeah, 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 because you didn't ask the questions. Why does she want it so fucking bad, and why is anyone with her? Actually, Sir well, Davos, cur- Sir Davos uh, hints at this on the steps of uh, Dragonstone at one point in time. He goes, so you're free, huh? It was, I think it was to Masandra, Masan. Dre or whatever. Um, he's like, so you're free, right? So she would just let you go? She's like, yes, of course. I only work for her because I want to. She freed me and she freed all my people. It's like, mm, okay. Good, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Sir Davos, one of the lone people who's been smart throughout most of the show. And a good well, guy. It's interesting how you talk about the Mad King and her kind of fulfilling the legacy of her father. And I was thinking about John, like, the first season. And what they talk about really launched the show is, like, killing her his his dad, Ned Stark. Where it's, like, the first time you've had some character that felt like the main character of the show who you really cared about. And then you just see his head roll. And it's dramatic. And you're like this is a different kind of show and so there's a part of me that wonders you know because john is that kind of singular moral person who's willing to die to be fucked over for what he thinks is right is like wondering if there's some element of i'm curious in the finale like him basically fulfilling his father's prophecy too which is like you die because you're good yeah. Uh, Any predictions? I think, I think that uh, <laughs> I don't want to predict, but um, <laughs> I know you might get pissed. People, this is the this has been an interesting the last couple episodes. It's like people aren't only unsatisfied with the content; they're like mad at the show. People well, are I think out, it's really like, funny. outraged, like, I, I, fuck the writers. It's like, yeah, they only gave you, like, the best show ever for <laughs> many, many hours of, of pure people, enjoyment, I think a lot and of, now they, I hate them. Yeah, I know a lot of people are really pissed off at how this goes, and I want Game of Thrones to go on for a long time, too. I would like it to go on for longer, but I don't think that the criticism is valid that Danny took too fast of a character turn. Mm. I think that when you rewatch the show, when a lot of us do, even on if the threats that this show is oh, it lost it in the eighth season, whatever. But if you rewatch it and you think about it, you will see that Danny is the villain and has always been the villain, and they've shown it to us the whole time. And we were we were intentionally faked. We were intentionally given red herrings the whole time. And I think George R. R. Martin knew it from the beginning. And I think. It just it, it just feels like it's all planned. The whole thing about the Mad King and if I can't have it, I'm going to fucking burn the whole city. And her doing the exact same thing. And all of the times, if you play it back, all of the times where she threatened it, where she said that's what she'd do, where she took things, where really she's saying she's doing one thing but the real result is another. There is, we were all tricked to believe she wasn't a villain. Yeah, I and feel... she's ultimately, obviously, the greatest villain the show has ever seen by this point in time, and yet people are like, I can't believe it. She's good, it's like because of what? Because she freed the slaves to be permanent slave army. Like, <laughs> is that really your moral? Is that really the thing that she did? Because that that sounds really fun as a life. I love this. I feel like I have an excuse to rewatch the whole series now. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a re- totally rewatchable. I think knowing how it's going to end is going to totally color the whole thing again. I think it's going to open up how people watch it. Um, so anyway, I'll be a contrarian on this. I think that she. I think it was the way that it should have gone, and I think it was the way that the writers 
not in, not only the writers of HBO, but George R. R. Martin knew it was going to go the entire time, and that's why we saw all these things, and we missed it. They faked you out. I was certainly faked. Anyway, okay, so uh, thanks very much for watching. Thank you. Okay.